Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer with St. Albans. It's good to be praying with you this morning. I'm joined, as always, by our music director, Elizabeth Knudsen. And rounding out our team of Elizabeths today is Elizabeth Ward, a lifelong member of St. Albans. Is that right? Ah, uh, St. Stephen's to begin with. but then Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm happy I get to pray with you today. Um, so let's... Uh, so Elizabeth has Elizabeth Knudsen. This might be difficult. But Elizabeth <laughs> Knudsen has our first hymn this morning. This is an old familiar one that many of you have probably heard because we've done it in church before. I do remember that one. Excellent. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves on and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
our first or our first and only psalm this morning is psalm 146 i would invite uh, you at home to pray along with me this psalm hallelujah praise the lord O oh my soul I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to God, to, to my God, while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow but frustrates the, wick, the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Oh, we got another one. <laughs> Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him and those who await his gracious favor. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgment to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered, If one ventures a word with you, will you be offended? But who can keep from speaking? See, you have instructed many. You have strengthened the weak hands. Your words have supported those who were stumbling, and you have made firm the feeble knees. But now it has come to you, and you are impatient. It touches you and you are dismayed. Is not your fear of God your confidence and the integrity of your ways your hope? Now a word came stealing to me. My ear received the whisper of it. Amid thoughts from visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on mortals, dread came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones shake. A spirit glided past my face. The hair of my flesh bristled. It stood still, but I could not discern its appearance. A form was before my eyes. There was silence. Then I heard a voice. Can mortals be righteous before God? Can human beings be pure before their maker? 
Even in his servants he puts no trust, and his angels he charges with error. How much more those who live in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed like a moth. Between morning and evening they are destroyed. They perish forever without any regarding it. Their tent cord is plucked up within them, and they die devoid of wisdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. second reading is from the book of Revelation. After this I looked, and there in heaven a door stood open, and the first voice which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there in heaven stood a throne, with one seated on the throne, and the one seated there looks like jasper and carnelian, and around the throne is a rainbow that looks like an emerald, and around the throne are 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones are 24 elders, dressed in white robes with golden crowns on their heads. Coming from the throne are flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder, and in front of the throne burn seven flaming torches, which are the seven spirits of God. And in front of the throne, there is something like a sea of glass, like crystal. Around the throne and on each side of the throne are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature, like a lion. The second living creature, like an ox. The third living creature, with a face like a human face. And the fourth living creature, like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and inside. Day and night, without ceasing, they sing, Holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who is seated on the throne, 
who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall before the one who is seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne singing, you are worthy, our Lord and God. You receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much. Our third reading this morning is a reading from the gospel according to Mark. He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without power except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their disbelief. Then he went among, then he went about among the villages teaching the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I threatened to have Elizabeth preach this sermon for us today, but she respectfully declined. And so I will ex- I will accept her declining. Uh, the uh, sermon today could go a lot of different ways. Um, I think that there are whew, a lot of questions. Uh, the readings are weird in so many different ways. Um, in the Old Testament, um, you have someone going up to a guy in um, Job who has lost everything in his entire world, except for his own life. His life kind of sucks now. He's got boils and all these things on him. He's lost all of his family except his wife. And his wife is saying, you should curse God. You're, I mean, this is terrible. Why would you not curse God? And um, and then so you've got this guy named uh, what is he's a he's a Temanite. Forget what his first name is. You got this Temanite and he comes up and says, you know what, Job? I don't get why you're such a why you're such a crank about this. Um, you would come up to people and try to encourage them whenever they were going through bad stuff. Why don't you just remember how happy and inspiring you used to be and, you know, inspire yourself. So that's who this Temanite is. And uh, so that's weird that, so, so that we've got this guy coming and bothering Job and um, revelation as a, uh, uh, as a member of the congregation recently pointed out, is a very weird, uh, weird. I don't know if it's a letter. If it's it's not a gospel, it doesn't. It's not a letter. It's a revelation. It's a really weird revelation. Um, and then you've got Jesus, and we're like, okay, we're safe with Jesus. Yes, give us something to to get a hold of here, Jesus. And Jesus is in his hometown, and everybody's hating on him. And um, and all of a sudden he can't do any works of power there. It, his Jesus juice is dried up. You're like, what is going on? Readings for the times. Readings for the times, indeed. Um, we live in weird times. We live in strange times, unprecedented times. We live in times where... Uh, people's empathy for one another is um, unfortunately uh, quite low. We live in a time where we're hearing things. We're hearing things about coronavirus. We're hearing things about racial reconciliation and un- and unrest that we've maybe never heard before. Um, we're seeing people and institutions uh, not able to do the things that we think they should be able to do. Uh, it's very disconcerting. It's very disturbing. It's very stressful and anxiety producing. If you find yourself feeling like that today, um, and I don't know what's going to happen between now and, and Sunday morning, but it could be a, it could be a lot. It seems like it can spring up overnight. But just know that... Um, your ability to, you might be someone who has always been strong, who perhaps has been strong for others when they felt weak. Um, and perhaps after six or seven months of quarantine, you're starting to wear down. You're starting to feel tired. You can't give anything because you don't got anything to give. Well, just know in Job, your story is in there. Job's story is a story of someone who used to be able to give to people encouragement, inspiration, used to be able to drag them out of depression. And after a a really, really bad day, he can't even do it for himself. There's room for you in God's story. Perhaps you've just been overloaded with information. There's terms, terminologies, ideas, vocabulary, concepts that you've never heard before that seem as strange as 
four creatures uh, with many eyes and all sorts of things, things that are unfamiliar and hard to understand. Perhaps you're having a hard time understanding uh, what is happening and why it's happening. There's room for you in God's story. There's room for you in God's story if you feel confused right now. Perhaps you've come here on a Sunday morning praying desperately that Jesus will take away everything that is driving us crazy right now. And you realize that it'll be at least uh, another, another bit until something changes. Because at least for today, um, Jesus isn't, isn't changing anything on his own. Um, if you're feeling, if you're, if you're feeling like you're wishing that Jesus would do a little bit more around here, <laughs> well, there was this time when he could do no deeds of power, when those around him, uh, doubted. There's room for you in God's story. I think sometimes we've had enough weirdness. Sometimes we've had enough strangeness uh and sometimes we come to church and hope that we don't get any more of it and when we do we think why god why why couldn't you just give me a good shepherd sunday or something where i can hear psalm 23 and hear about jesus uh being the good shepherd well this is not good shepherd sunday this is a very weird sunday after many weird Sundays. But there is room for the weirdness of this time, the weirdness of this Sunday, the weirdness of this moment in God's story. God's story is not limited to the normal. God's story is not limited to what has always been. God's story is always open to the unexpected, to the surprising. God's story is is always open to your experience, to my experience. And God's story is always open to something new. This is a weird Sunday. This is a weird time. But we worship a God who can work with that. We worship a God who can work with weird. We can worship a God with a experience so special uh, as ours. If you're not feeling normal, then that's pretty normal right now. There's room for you in this story. I would ask that you turn over all of your weirdness, all of your hard times, all of your um, unfamiliarities, all of your weariness, all of your cynicism, all of your confusion, and give that over to God. God's the only one who can make any sense of this. And God's going to do it when God's going to do it, and not a minute sooner than that. So if you're feeling weird today, know that you're in good company. Know that um, it would almost be weird if you didn't feel weird right now. And know especially that you are exactly where you need to be and that there is room in God's story for you. Amen. One of the things that's not weird and that I love about this time where we've been able to dig into the daily office is to say these prayers and to reaffirm our faith in these, in these ancient texts. One of the oldest being this creed, the Apostles' Creed. If you're feeling weird, or perhaps if you're feeling normal, I would invite you to pray this creed with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Elizabeth, would you please lead us in the Lord's Prayer? Sure. Oh, it would help if it was up, wouldn't it? Well, I do know it, but. <laughs> okay. uh, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we offer God this song with the help of Elizabeth Knudsen. Sorry, <laughs> I'll get it right here. There. Okay, we'll try that. No, I like that. Okay, we now offer, I now invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. On the St. Albans prayer list, we pray for uh, all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Alan, our diocesan bishop. We pray for the 
Bishop Search and Nominating Committee as they help to find our next bishop. Pray for our companion diocese of Brecon and Zara and Swaziland. We pray for everyone on our St. Albans prayer list, especially Marchetta, Ione, Vera, Michael, Will, Lori, Shayla, Vicky, and Harvey. We pray for the Society of St. John the Evangelist and the community of St. Mary, Southern Province. We pray for those who are sick and those who care for them. We pray for all those affected by the derecho here in Iowa. We pray for those who are preparing to go back to school, be they parents, children, students, or teachers, that all might be educated and serve our youth in safety and in peace. We also pray for those who will die this day and those who love them. To my friends, the Elizabeths, uh, I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving at this time. I just want to thank God for the beautiful, sunshiny day. And I just pray for Evan and Emma and everyone going back to school. Amen. We give uh, all these prayers to God. And uh, we give everything to God because it is from God that we get everything. And from this posture of thanksgiving, we offer a general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. 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 Thinking about who we're all connected to here over the internet through time and space, we remember this prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. You have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Oh, I didn't have those. Did I have those prayers up for that? Everybody knows those prayers. Everybody's got those prayers memorized. Um, okay. I just want to remind people um, later on this morning, um, I will be uh, preaching at First Lutheran, um, and the sermon topic will be on hope. I also want to remind folks, um, especially our St. Albans folks, if you have been wondering how you might get that stewardship pledge in, um, you can do that by coming to our website and clicking on this Give button. Hey, don't forget to say hi to St. Francis. Maybe say hi to his bird, too. Come over to this Give button, and then, wow, look at that stained glass. This is beautiful. And so here you are. You're on our giving page. You can, you know, why not just give, I don't know, a thousand, thousand bucks, you know, like everybody does. And then, look, you can put it towards the building fund. You can put it towards the general fund. Or if you're a pledging member, you can put it towards your 2020 pledge. You know, why not? You know, let's just give this weekly. That that help us out quite a bit, actually. And then you can choose uh, you can choose to give by debit or credit card, 
or you can chose uh, you can use your checking information here. But that is how you give. And you know what? Even that would be great. Um, so I will invite you to discern how you might uh, give to the Lord all a portion of all that God has given you, especially uh, appropriate as we have our stewardship chair uh, with us this morning. We'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> and uh, But otherwise, I hope that you have a great week. Um, from Elizabeth in Milford and Elizabeth in Fairmont, and from Father Tom and uh, coming from East Okaboji. Um, thank you very much. I hope that you have a great day. And uh, we'll be back here tomorrow morning at 830. So until then, God bless you. God keep you. And you keep the faith. Bye.